Coming up this week, OpenAI ramps up its consumer product strategy with the launch of a new video app. Anthropic unveils a new vision for software on demand. Microsoft unleashes a new set of AI agents that could transform how we use Excel and a new tool you can use to bring UI design directly into Cursor. Stay tuned for all of that and more. And if you enjoy the briefing, hit the subscribe and the like button. So first up this week, OpenAI ramped up its consumer product strategy with the launch of a new Sora video app and new shopping capabilities in ChatGPT. The Sora app is OpenAI's first major move into the consumer product space outside of ChatGPT. And so far, the app's most popular type of video seems to be memes like this one involving CEO Sam Altman. The market response to the launch has also been pretty mixed, with one commentator mocking the company for shifting its strategy away from lofty goals like curing cancer to AI video slop. But Altman defended Sora by saying that reality is nuanced when it comes to the optimal trajectories for a company. On the face of it, this shift into consumer products makes sense. OpenAI owns the models, and once they reach a certain level, the strategy is to build world-class apps on top of it. If OpenAI can successfully steal the meta playbook of cross-selling its users across different apps and build a family of products, then it may just work. But putting the app aside itself for a second, if you take a closer look at their promotional materials, there's also one aspect of their new release that could be particularly relevant for product teams. As you can see here, Sora lets users continue with ChatGPT, a new type of login that allows users to log in with their ChatGPT account. And with ChatGPT pushing 1 billion users, this could pave the way for it to compete with the likes of Google for single sign-on. The other announcement, OpenAI's new shopping feature, allows users to buy products directly inside ChatGPT, and this has been built in partnership with Stripe. As part of this partnership, Stripe announced a new open standard for agentic payments called Agentix Commerce Protocol, which provides a blueprint for how businesses can make their checkouts agent-ready so that users using ChatGPT can buy products directly from where they're discovering them. Stripe published a post summarizing how this new protocol works, which is worth a read if you're keen to get up to speed quickly with how payment methods and e-commerce might evolve to adapt to AI agents. ACP joins MCP as one of the most important emerging protocols for product teams. And if you're interested in learning more about how you might be able to use MCP at work, check out this week's knowledge series, which explores five practical ways that you can use MCP at work. You'll get access to step-by-step -step instructions for using MCP for things like getting status updates from Linear in Perplexity, testing your product's APIs and understanding documentation with Postman, and this use case, which is letting Claude take over your browser to do market research on your behalf. So if you're interested in exploring some of the ways that you can use MCP at work, then check out this week's knowledge series over on Substack. Elsewhere this week, if you're a Google Slides user, then this new feature could come in handy. You can now use Google's Nano Banana image editing model natively inside Slides to make edits to images. As well as editing, you can use prompts inside Slides to place objects into different surroundings. So in this example, you could say, place this product in a New York subway station. And Google's main workplace rival, Microsoft, has some major updates of its own. This week, it launched a major new set of AI agents that it is labeling Vibe Working. Now, the Vibe-oriented branding is starting to get a little bit cringe at this point, but if these agents can do what Microsoft claims, then they'll be a pretty disruptive addition to the workplace productivity stack. The agents include Agent Mode in Excel, Word, and PowerPoint, and Microsoft says that its spreadsheet agent can speak Excel natively, meaning it can both create spreadsheets and evaluate them. The new agent's capabilities have been assessed against an OpenAI benchmark called Spreadsheet Bench. And in this case, Excel scores 57.2% versus 71.3% for human spreadsheet editors. Unlike previous native AI features which relied upon a OpenAI, Microsoft's latest features also incorporate Anthropic's new models. And this week, Anthropic released its own impressive new updates to Claude. The new Claude 4.5 model outperforms all other models in agentic tasks, and beats previous models on the software engineering bench test, with 82% versus Opus 4.1's 79%. Anthropic says that its agents can run continuously for up to 30 hours, which of course, if true, could have a significant disruptive effect on human labor. If these models can eventually complete tasks just as well, or if not better, than humans, then many business leaders may be tempted to replace humans with AI agents. Perplexity CEO says that the new model from Anthropic is, in quotes, incredibly good at agentic tasks, 
and that Perplexity's Comet will support these new models to power its own agentic capabilities. Anthropic's head of product management told The Verge that the performance of the new computer use models even surprised her. So computer use is where the AI model is tasked with completing real-world actions in the browser. And just four months ago, Sonnet 4 was leading with a score of 42.2%. The new models now lead with a jump up to 61.4%. Scott White, a product lead at Claude, also explained that these capabilities are so powerful that he now sees Claude operating at a chief of staff level when it can do things like find availability between people's calendars, schedule meetings, read dashboards and write status updates. Anthropic's product team even uses this to search for new hires. As well as its new model, Anthropic also revealed what it calls an experimental new way for AI to build software. Now this is called Imagine with Claude, and it's a fundamentally different approach to using and building software. So essentially it replaces code authoring with direct UI construction, acting from context to create elements instantly, which is almost akin to something like software on demand, where a user is both creating the software and using it at the same time. For people like me who have spent most of our careers building products and then shipping them to users, this idea of a user creating their own product themselves does seem pretty disorientating. Would the average user ever really want to bother to create their own software? And if they do, what types of apps would they build? And most importantly, what does this all mean for the future of SaaS? They were just a few questions that spring to mind after watching this video. What do you think? Is the future of software something like this, where users will create their own software on the fly? Or do you think people will always prefer to offload the creation process to others? Let me know in the comments below. Now let's take a look at some tools you can use. And we'll start with a product called Alex, which is designed to automate your entire recruitment process with an AI recruiter. This week, the company raised $17 million, and it's a product that will handle the entire interview process. So it will do on-demand phone screening calls, live video interviews, and automated scheduling. So if you're currently hiring in your company, but you don't have the time to invest in the entire interview process, then maybe Alex could be something worth checking out. The next product is something called Integrity. And this is kind of like a combination of Claude, Notion, and Miro all in one product. It's designed to bring all of your notes, canvases, and AI chats into one single connected workspace. Now I can imagine how this could be super helpful if you're somebody who has different spaces for your notes and for your diagrams and also for your AI chats. So this could be a really helpful way of consolidating everything in one place and ultimately boosting productivity. And the final product for this week is a product called Pencil. Now this is backed by major investors like Anderson Horowitz, and it could transform how we use tools like Cursor. So this embeds visual designs directly inside IDs like Cursor, and it describes itself as design mode for Cursor. So if you're somebody who wants to get some hands-on experience with things like Cursor and Claude Code, but you find IDEs a little bit intimidating, then this new product Pencil could be something worth checking out. Now let's move on to some data and trends for the week, and we'll start with a new study from Deloitte. This is the Consumer Connected study, and it shows us that 4 in 10 customers are now paying to use a generative AI product. This survey included a panel of 3,500 US consumers and asked them how they're currently using AI, and it's full of some pretty interesting nuggets. In the results, you can see that 34% of respondents say they now use AI for, for work, which is up from just 6% two years ago. 65% of users access generative AI through their phone, which is the biggest percentage of all devices. 75% say that generative AI features are improving their lives in some way, and 29% of respondents plan to increase their spending on generative AI services. So if you're keen to get some insights into how customers view and use AI, then check out that new survey from Deloitte. And one company that's keen to see more spending on generative AI services is Amazon. This week, Amazon's product chief, Panos Panay, told audience members at their latest product launch that Alexa Plus users are actually using the voice assistant more than twice as much as before, and that usage for tasks like shopping and streaming have increased. And if you're interested in learning more about the engagement rates of other products across different industries, then the latest Amplitude Products Benchmarks report could also be worth a look. In it, they share the average acquisition, engagement, activation, and retention rates across different industries. And as you can see from this graph, activation rates range from 1.9% up to 8.9%. And elsewhere in the report, they also explain something that I found quite interesting, which is that there isn't a strong correlation between the number of active users that a company has and the long-term retention rates. 
This chart illustrates how engagement on the left relates to retention on the right. And as you can see, only a small strand of products in the top quartile for engagement actually flow into the top quartile for retention. So if you're interested in learning more about industry-wide benchmarks for things like engagement and retention, then check out that latest report from Amplitude. And finally this week, we finish with the news that Accenture is laying off 11,000 workers, but is using a pretty harsh method for deciding who will lose their job. In their latest earnings report, Accenture said that it is prioritizing the exit door for people where upskilling in AI is not a viable path, which is a pretty harsh reminder of the consequences of not becoming AI fluent in 2025. In the latest DOP poll this week, I asked you what product team role you think is most likely to be replaced by AI, and so far, product management is winning. And on that note, I'll leave it there for this week. Thanks very much for listening and watching. I'll be back next week with another briefing.